Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Module. This is lesson eight, ordering integers and other rational numbers. So remember that an integer are numbers negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three, and they go on forever and ever both directions. Okay, that's an integer. Rational numbers are numbers in between. So if I threw a number in here, 1.5, two and a third, those are rational, anything that can be represented as a fraction. Integers are also rational, but all rational are not integers, okay? So integers are just a set of positive and negative numbers without decimals and fractions. And rational numbers are all positive or negative numbers that are fractions. That can be represented as fractions or decimals. So in other words, negative 3 is a rational number as well as integer because negative 3 over 1 is a fraction. Okay? All right. So here's example 1. Ordering rational numbers. Sam has $10 in the bank. He owes. Keyword there, owes. He owes his friend a bank. Two dollars and twenty-five cents. That's negative. He owes his sister a dollar seventy-five. Consider the three rational numbers related to this story of Sam's money. Right in order them from least to greatest. So I wrote them. Now we need to order them. Well, obviously a positive number is greater than a negative number, so that's going to go over here. But then we have to decide. Well, some people think negative two point two five is less than a dollar 75 or 2.25 is greater than 1.75 so it'd go over here but in all actuality if you are confused with negatives draw a number line here's my 10 and say zeros here and if this is negative one and this is negative two and this is negative three not drawn to scale obviously then negative 1.75 is going to go right here, and 2.25 is going to go right here, okay, there and there. So if we order them from least to greatest, the further left we go on the number line, the smaller things get. The further to the right we go on the number line, the larger things get, okay? So least to greatest means to read the number line from left to right. So negative 2.25 is less than negative 1.75. And then negative 1.75 is less than $10. So this is the order. So when you order them, you just put commas in between. And this would be our answer. Okay? Now exercise two through four. For each problem, list the rational numbers that relate to each situation. Then order them from least to greatest. So I always underline this because sometimes they'll ask greatest to least. You need to be careful. And when it says to explain how you made your determination, you can just use a number line and explain the distance from zero. Okay, so if I start out during their most recent visit to the optometrist, which is an eye doctor, Kadisha and her sister Beth had their vision tested. Kadisha's vision in her left eye was negative 1.5. So I'll write negatives in red. Okay, and her vision in her right eye was the opposite number. Well, what's the opposite of negative 1.5? 1.5. Positive. Beth's vision is negative 1. 1.5. 0. 0. In her left eye, and a plus 0.25 in her right. Okay? So I listed them. So it said, list the rational numbers. So always read your questions uh, thoroughly and answer the question asked, okay? And then if you're still not sure about this least to greatest stuff, draw a number line. Here's my number line. And my largest number is 1.5. So if I put 2 here, and I like to leave a lot of space so we can see what's going on. And we only need to go out to negative 2. There's nothing less than negative 1. Okay, so here's my number line. So now I'm going to move these to where they belong. So negative 1.5 would be here, halfway between negative 1 and negative 2. Negative 1 is right here. I'll just 
placed it right there because that's where it is. And then I put a dot there. And then 1.25 is between 0 and 1. So it's approximately here. 0.25. And then finally, 1 and a half is over here. And then if I put a dot there, now I have listed them from least to greatest. Negative 1.5, negative 1, positive 0.25, and 0.5. Okay, so then I could move my number line out of the way. And like so. Okay, so now I have 1.5, negative 1, positive 0.25 and 1.5. And we always put commas in between when we're listing. Okay? Alright, number three. There are three pieces of mail in Miss Thomas's mailbox. A bill from the phone company for $38.12. Well, if you get a bill for $38.12, um, you owe it. So that's a negative $38.12. A bill an electric company, negative 67.55, so the first thing we're doing is listing, and a tax refund, getting money back is positive, 25.89, okay, and it says here a bill is money that you owe, and a tax refund check is money that you receive, so receiving is positive, owing is negative, so I'm going to do this one without a number line. Obviously, the point two or the 25 is positive is furthest to the right. It's the only positive number because in between positives and negatives, we always have the number zero. So then I'm going to move these. So does it go like this? And then think of your number line. The further from zero we get, the larger the negative number becomes. So it's going to end up like this. Okay. And... Here's our list. And I didn't need that zero because that's just a reference to the number line. So there's a list of the three given values from least to greatest. Okay? Number four. Monica, Jack, and Destiny measured their arm lengths for an experiment in science class. They compared their arm lengths to a standard length of 22 inches. The listing below shows in inches how each student's arm length compared to the 22 inches. Okay, so Monica's was negative 1.8. Destiny's was negative 1 half, which means it was that much less than 22. So Destiny's was 21 and a half inches long, and Monica's was 21 and 7 eighths inches long. And then Jack's arm is longer, his is positive, it's greater than the 22, and his was 23 and 3 quarters inches long. I will do a number line for this one. So if I draw a number line, we're working around the number 22 in this case, not zero. Okay? But 22 is our reference point, zero, if you will. And we want to know how far from 22 these arm lengths are. Okay, so Jack's is positive. So his is over here, one and three quarters more than 22, which would be 23 and three quarters. And then going back the other way, um, so we have a negative 1.8. Just doing this so it'll be separate. And a negative 1 half. Now, I might think that 8 is greater than 2, so it's got to go further down this way. But I'm going to explain to you how to determine this when you have different denominators. So I, I want to make these all 8s. So if I make a negative 1 8, I can't, don't have to change that. But if I want to make this an 8, make 8 in the denominator, I have to multiply 2 by 4. So if I multiply the 2 by 4, I have to multiply the top by 4, and negative 1 times 4 is negative 4. So now I'm going to put these in order, so let me just move this out of the way. And I'm going to label this. And eighths, and this is going to be 21 right here. So this is going to be negative 1 eighth, negative 2 eighths, negative 3 eighths, negative 4 
four eighths, negative five eighths, negative six eighths, negative seven eighths, and negative eight eighths is one, and one less than 22 is 21. So then I take my two values that I had, one half, which is the negative four eighths, and that goes right here, and the negative one eighth is over here. Okay, so now when I get rid of these, so now my answer is going to be negative one half, comma, one eighth, comma, one and three quarters. So there's the list from these two grades. Example two, ordering rational numbers from greatest to least. So be careful. Now we're going large to small. Jason is entering college and has opened a checking account, which he will use for college expenses. His parents gave him $200. Okay, that's a positive thing to deposit into the account. He wrote a check for 85 for his calculus book and a check for $25.34 to pay miscellaneous school supplies. Write the three rational numbers related to the balance of Jason's checking account in order from greatest to least. So I'm going to write $200. Okay. And then I'm going to write negative 85. Since it's negative, I'll use red. So I'm just listing these. I suppose I could put the point zero zero here. Not necessary, but it's money. And finally, a negative twenty five thirty four. Okay. Now we want to order these from greatest to least. So two hundred is positive, so it's going to be greater than these. So we're really just taking the number line and rotating it around and doing it backwards. Okay, so then negative 25 34 and the least is owing $85. Okay. So that's greatest to least. Okay. For each problem, list the rational numbers that relate to each situation order from greatest to least. Explain how you arrived at your order. Okay. Right here, everybody, everybody, not everybody, but a lot of students ignore that word right there. You get an answer, you don't explain it, you're going to lose points on an assessment. The following are the current monthly bills that Mr. McGraw must pay. Okay, so these are all bills. All right, so they're all negative numbers. So this is the negative 122. Okay, this is negative. 73.45 and the cell phone bill is negative $45. For ordering them from greatest to least. So when a number is negative, the smaller the number, the greater the value. Okay, that may be a little confusing, but we're on the negative side. The closer to zero, the greater we are. So I'm going to pick the biggest negative number, and that's actually the smallest. Okay, so there's my least, so that's going to go over here, okay? And my greatest is the small, is the one that is closest to zero. Okay, so I'm going to put that there, and then finally here. So greatest to least is going to be negative 45, negative 73, negative 122. As negative numbers get bigger, okay, on the number line, they're getting further from zero, and for this greatest to least, we're working right to left on the Okay, now this one. We have a negative one third. We have zero. We have one eighth. We have a negative one fifth. I'm just listing them again and I'm color coding them positive green, negative red, and I use black for zero. Okay, so there are my numbers. So now I want to order these in greatest to least order. Well, obviously, the positive number is the greatest. And zero is greater than any negative number. And now we're dealing with that one third, one fifth thing again, where the denominators are different. And if that confuses you, you can turn them into these common multiples. And I can say, well, one third negative with one third, I want it to be the same denominator of 15. 
negative one fifth, I can think. So the least common denominator is 15. Okay, so I want to multiply by, not equals here, I want to multiply by something. What can I multiply by negative one third times something to equal the 15 in the denominator? That's what I wanted to write. I take negative one fifth times something to equal. A denominator of 15. So I need to multiply 3 times what to get 15? Well, that's 5. So if I multiply the bottom by 5, I have to multiply the top by 5. And negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. Okay, to get 15 from 5, we have to multiply it by 3. Negative 1 times 3 is negative 3. So I have negative 5 15 Okay, right here, a negative 5 15 And a negative 3 15 so the bigger the number, the smaller it gets on the numerator. So this is the smallest, negative 5 fifteenths. So negative 1 third is the least, and negative 1 fifth is closer to zero. All right? So as the denominators and fractions get bigger, they're getting closer to zero. That's a really important concept for you to start understanding. The larger the bottom gets, the closer to zero. 1 tenth, 1 one hundredth. If I wrote those as decimal places, they're getting smaller. One one thousand is point zero zero one, getting really, really, really close to zero as the bottom gets bigger. Okay, that's the end of lesson eight. Your problem solved.